The small town donut shop used to be ubiquitous, but these days you'll likely find a chain store instead of the mom and pop shop that once stood in its place. Connecting Point's Brian Sullivan hit the road in search of the classic donut shop in Western Mass and found out there were only a few to be had here in the 413. Just the sight of this box can evoke any number of emotions among those who cross its path. Nostalgia of childhood Sunday mornings. Anticipation of the assortment to be revealed once that piece of tape is finally peeled off. Certainty that whatever the contents are, they are good. And ravenous cravings once its symphony of sugary scents tickles the olfactories. Locating a purveyor of these deep fried dough delectables, well that ought to be easy enough. That is, of course, if we are only looking for one purveyor. The near monopoly that one company has on the market has made the standalone, family-owned operation the dinosaur of the coffee and donut shop landscape. But they do still exist, and so do their fans. I've been coming here for probably 30 years now, and I think it's a community place. It's a place where people come to solve all the world's problems, the town's problems. Uh, I think it's some, as much of a social place as a place to get donuts. My father used to come here every morning to, you know, with his buddies and everything else, and he, uh, he couldn't come here, you know, driving-wise, so I started taking him here. And then I just got the same vibe and the same feel and meeting people here, you know what I'm saying? And then, you know, the good donuts and everything else, and, you know, like I said, it's a, just a town-friendly place to come. In our search of the entire 413 area code for donut shops that have been here for over 50 years and weren't part of a chain, we found three, and only two extended invitations to us. One was in Greenfield, where Adam's Donuts is just about as down home as it gets. Now, there's some debate as to how long they've been selling donuts here, but there is proof that the structure itself has been here since at least 1940. In 2014, local resident Carrie Brown became the shop's fifth owner. So far, she's been able to keep the ship afloat, thanks in large part to her family putting in plenty of hours behind the counter. Now, while the hours of operation may seem short, that has more to do with the fact that Carrie herself is doing the heavy lifting in the overnight, long before that first sugar-coated jelly filled is even sold. We start probably about eight hours before we even open, um, making the doughs and, and frying the donuts and getting it all ready to open for 5 a.m. Um, so there's quite a bit that goes into it before we even open the doors every day. And Brown isn't without competition. Just one-tenth of a mile to her right is one drive through chain. Two-tenths of a mile to her left is another. And only a few miles away is a third. So how does a business like her survive in this climate? Well, it's probably not supposed to. The same way that many local savings and loans didn't survive and turned into this. Or the town pharmacy disappeared. It became this on nearly every block. Even the local burger restaurant that's been around for almost 100 years has this directly across the street. Call it a corporate takeover, call it unfair competition, but it's the kind of thing that we've continued to passively accept as a society in the name of convenience. Just don't tell that to the regulars at Adams Donuts, who see this place as their de facto community center. The reason it survives is because of this. So many uh, towns now, small towns, are losing uh, these types of businesses. Everything's becoming big, fast food places that have no personality, and, and a place like this is really great. And it's an institution here in Greenfield. From one institution to another, nostalgic donut lovers can take a trip straight down Route 5 from Greenfield to the place that looks like the road was actually built around it. And like Adam's Donuts, the pastries here are also made fresh daily. Oh Apple fritter? Don't mind if I do. The Donut Dip has been a landmark here on Route 5 in West Springfield since 1957, back before Route 91 was even built. And here at their location in East Long Meadow since 1965, where any donut that I can get over there, I can get here as well. But if I want it straight out of the oven, I get it here in West Side. Just watching the donuts get made might be the next best thing to eating one. And not only does that whole hot and fresh thing go a long way as a means of maintaining their authenticity, it's also a big drawing card for first timers here at the West Springfield location. You know, we have people that come here every day for their cup of coffee and a donut on their way to work or on their way to school or wherever they're going. 
but we also have this huge number of people that come in here and they're very, very excited to be here. They, they feel like they've found something very special and very unique, um, a real old school donut shop. That old school donut shop has now spanned four generations, and in a way, all four generations were in the store when we stopped by. A photo of great-grandfather and founder Charles Shields hangs on the wall, sort of keeping an eye on his still flourishing operation. His son Richard was on hand making time with the customers. Richard's son Paul was here helping to put together orders and give us an interview. And Paul's daughter Katie was behind the counter. Aside from some minor tweaks and equipment upgrades, the recipe for their donuts hasn't changed since they opened in 1957. And neither has the recipe for doing an end run around the competition in this prime location. Without naming names, there's very large chains that um, make it difficult at best, you know, to survive for a lot of shops, especially small shops. Um, you know, we're busy because we, we try to provide something really unique. Um, and, and do it in a really good way. And people appreciate that. 